Well, thank you and welcome everybody. Um, I'd like to again acknowledge and celebrate the our first Australians whose traditional lands we live and work and pay our respects to elders past, present and emerging. And I'd just like to say welcome, welcome, welcome to Making Research Software Fair, which is a brown bag brunch for both the ARDC and CSIRO. So you're in for a tasty uh, brunch time treat today. So CSIRO's Anne Stevenson, team lead for CSIRO's research data support team. Um, and also Keith Russell, our acting director of outreach at ARDC, will be introducing our brown, brown bag brunches. So it's an alliterative title that's hard to say if you say it too quickly, so I'll slow down a bit. Um, and then after that, we're going to hear from our amazing guest speaker, Paula Martinez, software project coordinator at ARDC on the value of making research software fair. So following Paula's talk, uh, you're encouraged to get involved in interactive mentee chat to discuss the challenges and advantages of making uh, research software fair with your peers in both ARDC and CSIRO. So just a little bit of housekeeping for the chat because we are recording, just going to ask you just to keep your mics uh, muted when we've got our speakers speaking. And if you have questions, um, please keep them for the end. And if we're running short on time and we can't address them in the question and answer session, we'll be able to reply post event. Um, and without further ado, I have the great pleasure of introducing, and many of you will already know, doesn't require any introducing really, uh, but I, I'm going to do it anyway. So I'd, I'd like to introduce you to Anne uh, Stevenson, who will kick off our first CSIRO and ARDC Brown Bag Brunch. So take it away, Anne. Thank you, Mary. Um, I'm Anne Stevenson. I have the very great privilege to lead the research data services team in CSIRO. And I'm talking to you from Warramai country today on the north shore of the Hunter River in lovely Newcastle. Our goal is to improve data management practice across the organisation. I'm currently acting executive manager for the science engagement group while John Zick is on leave. And I'm introducing this series of brown bag brunches on John's behalf. Some of you will know that the Australian Research Data Commons or the ARDC, and yes, this is going to be acronym heavy, is a development evolving from the Australian National Data Service or ANS. The relationship between CSIRO and ANS goes back to ANS inception in 2008, with CSIRO staff like Ross Wilkinson and Cynthia Love and several others joining ANS in leadership and development roles, either directly or on secondment. There are several staff now on contract with ARDC that are managed um, through John Zick. Did you know, for example, that Anne's funding was behind the creation of CSIRO's data access portal? First released in 2011, the DAP now has over 7,200 publicly available collections with a further 900 entries available to a more restricted audience. Metadata of those publicly available collections flows automatically to multiple systems, including um, ARDC's Research Data Australia and the data.gov.au. Uh, data so yes, there's a plug there. CSIRO's management of research data principles defines data very broadly. And in the research data services team, we talk about data using that broadest possible definition, including um, software and code, and we actually articulate that. However, I was party to a conversation with some research project leaders recently where I heard that when we say data management, those involved in creating and maintaining software and code don't always hear that software management is part of that big picture. So um, I, I wanted to say that this valuable brown bag brunch initiative realized largely due to Mary's drive, provides additional opportunities for engagement between ARDC and CSIRO to encourage the data and software management conversations to share knowledge, experience and ideas. I welcome and encourage your participation and I'll hand over to ARDC's Keith Russell. Great, Thank, thanks Anne, that was that was great. And you've stolen stolen some of the stuff I wanted to say. <laughs> no, no, it's great. Um, yeah, so my role is Acting Director Outreach within uh, the Australian Research Data Commons. As Anne, Anne mentioned, it, it's, it's wonderful to have ARDC staff embedded 
in CSIRO and based there at a number of locations, uh, CSIRO locations around the country. And it, if we, what we just noticed is, is that it's really helpful to have staff close to um, uh, CSIRO and the cutting edge work that's happening there. So we thought it was a good opportunity to get actually get ARDC and CSIRO staff together and just do a bit of an exchange on what's happening in the landscape and what's happening in the, the ARDC project and uh, what we are doing, but also what uh, uh, what's happening in CSIRO and how those two, uh, how we can get those experiences closer together and learn from each other. As Anne mentioned, uh, ARDC is an NCRIS facility, came, came out of ANS, but also came out of NECTAR and RDS. And um, especially NECTAR did a lot of groundbreaking work around research software and research platforms. And that work has also been carried forwards in ARDC. And now uh, Tom Honeyman and Paula are leading, this, are working on the software program and really thinking about research software as a first class, um, uh, first class output of research too, and recognizing that. So um, I, for us, it's a really interesting voyage and we're in a really exciting time. The FAIR principles, I'm guessing everybody already knows. I won't spend a lot of time on those. I think it's been really interesting to see how the FAIR data principles, uh, we were back, back from 2015, have now been adopted and changed and were well, adopted for other research outputs, including uh, research software. So I hope this this uh, brown bag is going to be helpful to have a bit of a discussion about, well, what does FAIR in the context of research software actually look like and how can you make research software more reusable? So that that's probably my, my bit. Um, thank you all. Great to have you here and looking forward to having this as a brown bag and seeing if there's appetite for more of these on other topics down the track. So I'd like to hand over to Paula because I think Paula is going to be doing the presentation. So. Thank you, Keith, uh, for the nice introduction. You saved me a lot of words as well. Uh, I hope everyone can see my screen. Uh, Mary, can you give me a hands up? Yeah, awesome, thank you. Okay, uh, we are here today to talk about the value of making research software findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable. Um, yes, I've been introduced. My name is Paula Martinez. I work for the software program. I am the software project coordinator. You have my email available if you have questions, and I am happy to keep on going with this conversation. Uh, first, I'd like to acknowledge the country, the land of the Yagara and Tarba people in which I live and work around the Brisbane River. I pay my respects to the elders, past and present, and emerging leaders that have a connection with the land. I also like to acknowledge the organizers for inviting me to present uh, about work that I've been doing since 2018 before uh, joining ARDC. Okay, so yes, you said that most of you already know about the FAIR principles. Um, with a little bit of background, the FAIR principles for research data management were published in 2016 in uh, scientific data by Wilkinson et al. This acronym stands for making digital assets findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable. At ARDC, we support FAIR principles and we ask all our partners and collaborators to, to have data and code to be as open as possible. We support the FAIR principles with a lot of resources that I welcome you to have a look. If you haven't found these resources before, you can go to the ARDC website under resources FAIR data. Now I am going to reinforce the value and I don't want to specifically talk about one digital uh, output or asset. So I'm going to talk in general about what's the value <coughs> of FAIR inputs and FAIR outputs. Fair research inputs and outputs drive research impact. They drive quality, <coughs> translation, and innovation. And these are all great because uh, res research and society benefits from it. So now talking in more detail about software and why don't we just take software as a type of data? Because that's how initially the FAIR principles were uh, promoted. 
from a position that software is not a type of data, we have to identify very unique characteristics. For example, uh, software has a specific nature. Um, software is the result of a creative work rather than a collection of information in a data set. For example, uh, software can be expressed in different forms. One of those is source code. It can be human and machine readable, but it can also be an executable. So these differences need to be taken into account. While data might have different formats, but it's just in one form. Um, another important feature of software is that it continues to evolve over time and it changes in functionality and it can become something different from what its starting point. And for it to be functional, it needs to be continuously maintained. So the, the, then we see there are complex dependencies in software. There's almost no software that stands alone. All of them will uh, need different libraries and, and concepts and data sets to run uh, in a smooth way. I've also put some resources for you. So listing first the ARDC resource uh, hub, you can go to working with research software, you find a lot of guidance there. And also just starting the conversation because I'm gonna talk about Fair4RS, this is a group. It's a community on Sonoda where we have made publicly available a lot of our uh, outputs. So you're free to search that. Now I'm going to go through a timeline that is being particularly selected by me, but there is some <laughs> highlights and milestones that I wanted to share with you. I would like to start with 2016, the software citation principles. This publication has given the emphasis that research software is a scholarly output and it's critical uh, as part of modern research and it needs to be cited. So it encouraged approaches for software publishing and it also has collected a lot of information from existing community practices. It has an analysis and a reflection. Another uh, milestone is the 2018 uh, that you might be aware of. So these are short guides called the top 10 fair data and software things. It was run in an co in international collaboration between the AGU, the uh, library carpentry and different entities that are supporting FAIR. And the idea was that everyone in involved agrees that the applicability of the FAIR principles, it's really dependent on community standards, community formats and community ontologies. Hence, they got together in their own communities and provided examples for them. And that's when we started writing kind of a draft of what would be fair for research software. That was really a starting point. I would call it kind of like a, a, a preprint of what came to be in 2019, the paper called Towers First Principles for Research Software. And this, uh, I was involved in the writing of this paper and we had very clear intentions from the very beginning to have a discussion based on the fair principles for research data management and translate them to software and then have have that as a base for further discussions. We were completely aware that a group of people cannot define a set of principles that it's going to be globally applied. Um, I'm happy to let you know that by 2020, this paper was the most viewed article in data science. So it really called the attention of a lot of people. In 2020 is when we also got together and formed this international collaborative group between three international organizations. Uh, the for research software group was formed by the Research Data Alliance, Force 11, and the Research Software Alliance. During three years, we led conversations, more than 60 community events, and we looked at defining research software, examining um, what uh, are other efforts that have been applying the fair data principles to other digital assets. And we also had a recollection of literature review of before 2019, the TOWIS Fair uh, principles for research software and after that paper. 
What resulted it is in the completion of this working group output, and it's the definition of the FAIR principles. We call this version one. It's been reviewed by more than 500 people. Some of you are, or, uh, are in this talk, so I'm really happy that, that you see this moving forward. With this, I want to exemplify that there's been a lot of different types of inputs into the FAIR for IS principles. Now, I'll just move on. Uh, since 2020, the FAIR principles for research software are a step forward on the path to recognizing software outputs in academia and improving the curation of workflows that produces better research. This is a quote from uh, Dan Katz. And now, um, instead of going through each of the principles which you can access via the DOI in on the screen and also it's it's been a background reading uh, listed in the event registration form. Um, these are 17 uh, principles. Uh, I just want to summarize some of the considerations in defining the FAIR for research software principles and highlight what it's new and relevant to software. So I'll list four points. Uh, the first one is the intent and the methods of the FAIR guiding principles we're taking as a starting point. So that's our base. The FAIR were presented to the community to ensure transparency, reproducibility and reusability, which support research impact quality, translation and innovation. So that ethos we wanted to maintain with the FAIR for RS principles. Number two is that the FAIR principle are aspirational and fair is not binary. It's not that you are fair or not fair, that your output is or not fair. Uh, and we want to encourage that any fair metrics should show progress towards increasing fairness. Then, and we accept evolving outputs and, and we accept that at some point they might be fair and at some other point they might need some readjustments as well. Number three is that software encompasses many forms and that's from the definition of why we just don't take software as data. Um, and out of those many forms, we have agreed in the group that software source code is the most useful form and is the easiest to apply fair for research software principles. So if you are a developer, think about this form and that which one you are presenting to to make fair or to go through the fairness transition. And number four is that best practices coming from software engineering practices um, for developing software are very relevant and have informed the fair for IS principles, but they are not included per se. So they are better addressed separately. Okay, uh, and this is just the part where I can highlight some parts of the document. So the the GOI that I just mentioned before, and it's listed at the bottom of this slide. Starting on page, page five, you can see all the 17 principles. You'll see that if you, if you are very aware of the fair principles for data, you'll see there's not that many differences because of the ethos. But some that I want to highlight are for findable, for example. One uh, is the complexity and granularity. So those things are different in software and they need to be validated by having their own identifiers and also versions because uh, like I said before, software continues to evolve over time. In accessibility, um, if we talk from a software perspective, ensuring accessibility means that there are no barriers for the use of the software. And this definition is instead incorporated into the reusability principles. Here we have taken the accessibility definition as in the data principles, that it means to be able to retrieve the software. And what we have done here is just exemplify that we have now, uh, we recommend the use of standardized communication protocols that enable software to be retrievable, not only by humans, but, but also by machines. And interoperability, um, interoperability of data is mostly around the formats and the standards that enable this connection between different systems. In software, it includes that 
but also uh, we want to make sure that the way this information is exchanged is standardized. And how it happens in software is via applications. So there are things called APIs, application programming interfaces, that allows these channels of communications to make software interoperable. In the reusable, uh, there were many more differences with the uh, data principles uh, because of the, the overall reusability concept. Reusable in software can be both. One, it's usable, so it can be executable. If you are a researcher, you want to go into a service that produces an output, you are using software, research software. If you want this software to be reusable, it also needs to be understood. It needs to be uh, available for modification, for constructing upon it, and also incorporating other software. So for that, we need source code. Um, there's also uh, a highlight in giving appropriate licensing for software, and these are not the same as the data recommended licenses. And uh, the R2 is that it includes references to other software, which is a slight difference with um, the principle in interoperability that says includes references to other components. In other components, you can add data sets, you can add services and all other things that are not just software. But in the software one, we want to see what dependencies this specific version of the software has. Um, just to finalize, when you go through the details, if you haven't yet and you read this document, there is an appendix. It's Appendix B. It's a comparison of how the FAIR principles were taken from the original to the next iteration to what's the three different iterations based on commentary from the community and feedback that we received. So just to finalize my presentation, where to from here? Um, I want to encourage you, all of you, to be uh, advocates of the adoption of research software because we need all of you. The FAIR principles are relevant to the larger ecosystem and to various stakeholders. Uh, mainly the, the responsibility relies on the software owners, but they need the support from all of us. So they will need uh, incentives to make this rewarding, policy to make it require infrastructures such as repositories and registries that have been mentioned during this talk uh, by Anne Stevenson and also training and tools to make it easier. And I just want to acknowledge this is a, a diagram produced by Neil Chu Horn based on Brian Nosek's diagram for a change. Um, just because this is one of my last slides, there's also an article around adoption uh, where, where we have got in contact with international organizations that are willing to support the FAIR principles for research software and some examples of how they plan to do it. And that paper is listed there as well. It's Michelle Barker et al, 2022. Um, last two slides, uh, following the FAIR principles for research software, i like to let you know that it's not a simple to-do process. It's not check, 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 I'm done. Instead, this principle should be used as a guide and as what we can do. And they need to be faced with our day-to-day -day realities, the challenges of our projects, and the support that we have from our communities. Um, three values that I want to finalize with is that supporting FAIR for research software is is going beyond FAIR. Uh, it increases interdisciplinary expertise. It also can incentivize evaluation, maintenance, scalability, and agility of developing software for better research. And just encouraging you, if you are one of the developers of research software, that these initial challenges, if you remove them and you make it more accessible, more findable, more interoperable and more reusable, you are boosting the uptake of your software. Yes. That's all from me. Thank you so much. That's, that's fantastic. Thanks, Paula. That was an absolutely fabulous talk. I really enjoyed it. I'm sure everyone here enjoyed it as well, which is, which is brilliant.
So thanks so much. It was so great to um, just see the importance of like metadata and source code and community. Like those, those are three things that appeal to me very much all together. So yeah, so that's that's fantastic. So